Um, the XKID program is currently, we licensed it in in August of last year, and it's currently in two clinical trials, one in patients who are newly diagnosed with the disease. Uh, in the U.S., that would be by newborn screening. Outside the U.S., it would be by newborn screening, as well as family history, and potentially uh, simply by symptoms. Uh, and uh, so these patients are normally treated with standard of care, which is hematopoietic stem cell transplant. Um, so the gene therapy trial that's being conducted now by St. Jude is a multi-center trial. Uh, the St. Jude is the lead. The other two centers are the University of California, San Francisco, and Seattle Children's in Seattle. And um, that trial is, again, a gene therapy trial um, for these patients, which, is, um, which has done extremely well with very compelling data that have been presented at the American Society of uh, Gene and Cell Therapy in May of last year and I can get into those data momentarily. This is a second trial in patients who have already received hematopoietic stem cell transplant and are failing that transplant by virtue of increasing uh, incidence of infections. That trial is a single-center trial being conducted at the National Institutes of Health um, with Harry Malik as the principal investigator. So the disease, the incidence of the disease worldwide is uh, on the order of one to two per hundred thousand live births. So that gives us in the U.S. somewhere between 50 and 100 patients per year and uh, 50, maybe 60 to 120 in, in Europe simply because of the somewhat larger population. Um, there, those are the newly diagnosed patients. Now there are, as I said earlier, patients who are failing hematopoietic stem cell transplant. Those numbers are a little bit harder to come by, but we estimate them somewhere in the 1,000 to 1,500 patient range um, in the U.S. and 1,000 to 1,500 patient perhaps in Europe as well. And these are patients, again, that um, have already received transplant and are failing and therefore are looking for uh, other therapy. It could be a second transplant, but um, in this patient population in particular, um, a more definitive therapy like gene therapy would be something that would be highly attractive to them. And so we're looking eventually to get a label in both the newly diagnosed patients as well in the, as these uh, so-called relapsed patients or the reservoir of patients. Um, the disease itself is, uh, is caused by a mutation in a particular um, molecule called the uh, comma gamma chain. Um, of the gamma C receptor because it is a, a part of one of, of, of the interleukin receptors. Um, this receptor transduces signals um, from um, a number of interleukins and the uh, net result of this is a, a failure to uh, produce T cells and NK cells and a failure to produce um, B cells that, that make antibodies. So you have B cells that are present but are not functional. And the result of uh, the crippling of both the humoral and the cellular immune system is this combined def immunodeficiency, S SCID, SCID. And that leads to um, severe infections very early on in life and eventually to death by age one without treatment. The disease is diagnosed um, by newborn screening in the U.S., which exists in all 50 states plus uh, Puerto Rico and District of Columbia. Outside of the U.S., um, where there isn't newborn screening, if there's been a family history of, uh, of the disease, then, then parents are alerted to it and um, they will inform their physician and at the first sign of uh, an infection, the patient might be tested or the patient might just be just simply tested uh, knowing the family history. Absent that, um, patients are diagnosed by recurrent infections early on in life, early on in life um, unusual infections, infections that don't necessarily respond to conventional antibiotics. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and when the diagnosis is made, the goal is to get the patient to um, an allogeneic stem cell transplant as quickly as possible with the best quality donor that the physicians can find. Uh, the best quality donor is the so-called matched sibling donor. Um, that exists, those, those donors exist in about 10% of cases, and they do the best in terms of outcome, long-term survival, um, and, uh, lo and more importantly, long-term high quality of life. But even there, there's an early drop-off in terms of early death due to the procedure, and um, even there, there are patients that uh, do suffer um, chronic infections uh, over time. The second group is the other 90%, and there's a variety of different qualities of transplant, but across the board, those patients have a survival more in the 65 to 75% range with a um, comparably low quality of life. 
quality of life has to do with uh, infections, which can get progressively worse as the graft fails. Uh, it also has to do with graft versus host disease. Chronic graft versus host disease occurs in about 15% of patients. Um, patients, 58% uh, of patients require um, lifelong immunoglobulin, intravenous immunoglobulin, which is expensive and inconvenient. And then there are other um, uh, uh, health problems that are associated with the disease, such as uh, poor growth and uh, uh, protein and losing enteropathy, which causes a, a diarrhea. So overall, the quality of life of these patients, even in the patients that don't die from, their, from, from infections, um, uh, the quality of life is, is poor, and um, it, is, uh, it is imperative that we try to find better therapy for these patients, and we believe we have that, that therapy today in hand.